What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on, boys? Welcome back to another stream. What's up, T Web? What's up, Adren? It's good to see everybody. Waiting for some people to get in here. We'll get started. Got some things to talk about. Stuff coming up. <laughs> Justin, you need to be in the garage right now fixing that cam, bro. Just kidding. It don't look that bad, though. Did it, did it kink your roof? What's up, SRT? Fat boy, what's going on, boys? So anyways, I just got back from picking some parts. I love picking parts. What's up, Mike? What's up, Mod Motor? I just got back from... Uh, Youngstown, I met some, you know, you was 100 plus when you hit? What's up, QMC? So anyways, I was down in Youngstown, Ohio today because I was picking some parts. And, you know, it's really cool when you get to, like, meet other people that do kind of the same thing you do. You know, I got to meet a guy named Gino. And I got to meet another guy named Todd. And, you know, I mean, these are just Fox, you know, Fox body lover guys. And, I mean, they had a bunch of parts that I could pick. And, you know, they had a Fox body up on the lift. It was really cool. But that's that's true, Adren Cycle. That's cool. That, or, or, yeah. I think the custom axles my buddy has in his car, his Cobras, was like, I mean, they were like super custom. Anyways, so I was there today. Like I went to Youngstown and, you know, I got a chance to meet, you know, a couple of guys that are avid Fox body lovers like me. Had a bunch of parts. Uh, Gino had a nice, a real nice Calypso car up on his lift. He blew his C4 up. He was messing with it. So, you know, you're in good company regardless of what walks of life that these people come from. You know what I mean? So we get a shout out to them people. We get a shout out to Mike too, my buddy in Facebook, for those kind words he sent me. No, I went to a you pick, Adrian. Fox won one of the events in Beach Bend this weekend. Not surprised. I think my buddy Mustang Mike said that uh, they were doing an aerodynamic thing where they had it in a wind tunnel. And I guess the Fox Body Coupe was still one of the most aerodynamic cars ever made. Who figured? I mean, they just need to redo it. They just need to redo the Fox Body again. Just simple, clean. Yeah, we're going to do a Holly, T-Web. It's time to learn Holly. But I'm not getting away from my stock bottom end A9L stuff. Can you run an on-3 turbo with stock ECU, just upgrade pump, injectors, 30-pound mass? Your best your best bet, Junior, uh, uh, Juvie, is your tune should be your best mod, bro. If you can go get a tune. Hello, Ava. Man, I wish you were out here in Cali. I would drop off my Fox body to you. I appreciate that. I mean, there's a lot of Fox bodies that I could be getting my fingers all over, but like as far as working on them and stuff, but I'm busy myself, guys. I can't even get my 410 Windsor in. <laughs> Maybe. After the 3G, right. Mike, I've seen a rendering of a new Fox. Don't know. You know, 
They they could bring out what's up, Tony? What's up, big homie? <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna give it up. Don't say it right now in live stream, Anthony. Don't do it. I want I, I wanna bring I want I wanna bring it out with a bag. Anyways, we was doing some good racing last Wednesday. Old Tony. Keeping it real like the black car, man. That's dope. Okay. I need you to drive that up with your wife and kid so I can finish the video, bro. So SCT chip, Mega Micro, Holly, Pims, or Scotty, I would go straight to a tuner that knows what he's doing. Like binary editor, quarter horse, uh, the mega, you know, the, the squirt's a pretty good one, but it's, I think that's the one Brutal's using. So it's not terrible. It's pretty user friendly. But, anyways, what do you guys think of that video last week? Man, I got those axles in quick, didn't I? Man, I'll mess around, man. I like to race. AEM is pretty good. But yeah, I mean, I broke those axles. I had, I was on the phone with Mosier, had those, those C-clip eliminators on their way. I had to cut the pin, man. Somebody told me that in one of the comments said something about, well, I, what I did wrong, what I did wrong was I cut my ends too short. So that's very possible. But I've always cut them that short, so it never really made any sense to me because most of the time it was a spool anyways. You know what I mean? So I did I did measure an eighth up. Actually, no. Nine-inch ends mo, – uh, is that mo Moseus? Nine-inch ends are way superior. I have those on my white car's axle. The videos can't come fast, and I appreciate that. But – I was really disappointed. I ain't going to lie to you guys. I mean, I really put a lot of effort into putting a good, strong pressure plate and clutch, making sure that T5 was 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 strong enough to, you know, because, I mean, you guys see what we did with Hot Wheels. We beat the snot out of that T5. And that thing was blessed from himself. So, you know, I mean, I had no doubts that it was going to have any issues. And plus, I was I figured with the new axles, I'd be able to get down the track better. The 60-foot got a lot better. You know, it went from a you know a one six one to a one five eight three times in a row, but I think I'm just out of injector. So we got a sneaky little trick that we're gonna do this week though, and you guys are gonna have to wait for that one. I'm not gonna give it up right now, but we got a little trick. I don't I don't think the 19s have enough fuel no matter how much boost I throw at it because, you know, we did have that small pulley or that three three that three point three three inch pulley that came factory with that. And then we put a smaller pulley on there and, you know, it just didn't make enough. It, it made more boost. Maybe it made more boost, but it didn't go any faster. So, you know, we got, like I said, last week, we're going to have videos of valve springs, rocker arms. We're going to have videos of possibly a nitrous shot on that motor because zero F's are given, bro. I mean, we're sending this car while we work on black car, and then we're going to vlog them both. I'm going to vlog everything. You know what I mean? How many pounds key on, Justin? What kind of fuel are you running? Moses, I'm running a mixed 93 110. So, like the factory forge bottom ends of some Fox bodies are certainly years or T5 better. Nope. Like I said in my other video, like throwing parts at it or whatever, there's two videos ago or whatever, you could see I was inside. You could see I was inside of the trans, and I showed the two parts that really I think mean the most. It's the, two, it's the counter shaft support and the front bearing retainer support. So, Justin made 770, uh, yeah, 770 wheel on 80s. Woo! Those things was maxed, weren't they, Justin? Was you at 98, 100% injector duty? Well, 
What's up, Mike J? Give me one second. My daughter's texting me. Hundred five. <laughs> Woo! Those things are screaming. When the border opens back up, you got to do a track day. You know, I was thinking about that. I don't know if I had the pool like Caleb does with Foxcast. He pulls one one heck of a gig down there, and I was going to go to it, but I had a wrecked truck, had the cars ready. I had a wrecked truck, and I couldn't get there. So it's kind of excusable, but I guarantee I'll be there next year collaborating with those guys, you know, at least meeting them up, you know. What you booing about, 351? What's the word on the twin turbo? Man, let me tell you what. I was talking to that guy Gino today about this 7.3 Godzilla. Man, does that motor really make 600 NA? What's the most you will pay for a Fox body? Okay, that's good to talk. That's good to talk about right now. What's up, cousin Paul? Bobo 69 2001 is cousin Paul. So what's the most you would pay for a Fox body? That, there's a lot of things involved in that. So like, it just, is, it, is it a stock Fox body? Is it, has it got mods on it? Does it have anything? What's up, Chris O? Chris was in my video, the last video, about 12 minutes. 12 minutes in, we were talking about washer fluid. He's got the black notch in the background. He was making some hits on us Wednesday. I didn't get it. I got one good pass, I think, but he was spinning all the way up the track. Stock Mustang, it depends. They're worth anywhere between, depending on the condition, paint, interior, mileage. All right, so I did write down some stuff. I did write down some stuff that I was talk, wanting to talk about. Now, last week we talked about stock and neglected. They go, yeah, well, it depends. Up here in Ohio where the rust bucket is, it's usually 2000 for a good running one that needs work, paint, and rust repair. But anyways, last week we talked about what the number one mod was, what was the first mod that you guys did. This week we're going to talk about sort of the same thing because I'm going to keep notes. So what's the second mod that you do that's not Gears? Because Gears was the one that everybody said for the most part. What's the second mod that you do that – and you can chime in if you're, if you're just watching – my buddy and I had a 92 notch. We raced outlaw for six years. Our best time was four. Wow. I miss racing, but the money we spent, I know. Clay, I get it. Why you think I, why you think I just, I, I, I don't want to get away from stock bottom end stuff because I mean, I'm already there. It's gotta be one guys. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look through my, uh, my live chat later and I'm going to figure out which one's going to be. And then next week it'll be the third and then the fourth. It's almost like we're building a car here. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, when I go to actually make that video, I can reference my live streams and just, you know, kind of take from the masses. Here in Michigan, there was a 90, 93 LX stock bottom end GT40 T5 with on three guy wanted 6,200. Someone bought it the day after at asking 10,000. I bought a, I bought an on three turbo project hot wheels. I paid thirty two hundred dollars for had a bent rod in it, but it ran like some bitch. Ever seen a turbo cut on OBS? I think they were doing. I did not, Jonathan.
you can still get them pretty cheap in Washington. I picked mine up, pace car at 500. See now, QMC. I mean, the Euro clipped Fox bodies obviously are the ones that are bringing more money. So that's something good to talk about. You know, are Euro clip Mustangs worth more than pre Euro clip? Now, when I say Euro clip Mustangs, when they refer to Euro clip Mustangs, they consider 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. So seven years. I do not, Mike B. I don't know why. I mean, you can make block splitting power with the single turbo kit. And I know you got to do quite a bit of mods. I think you got to relocate your battery or something like that to run the twin turbo. See, now, the exception being 85, 86, Adrian, 86 is especially. I think it's the nose. I think it's just the body itself. It's just the car. So keep chiming in on what you guys think. You, last year, last week, it was the gears. If you could type, what's the second mod? What's up, Smurf? What's the second mod that you put on your car after you put gears in it? I just picked up a 92 Calypso. I'm building the street. It's hard to get away from race car to street car. That's right. That actually makes for a really good video, too. You know, where, you know, I honestly was thinking about making a video where literally, you know, when is it, when is enough enough? When does your car turn into literally like a, go from a street car to a race car or vice versa? Like, this is a conversation I'm about to talk to. I, it's a can of worms I really don't want to open, but we can discuss it and just be just be thoughtful about it. What is a streetcar? And we talked about this a couple weeks ago, I think. But that argument, that argument is just made. Like, like people put rules into it. Do you know what I mean? And it's kind of garbage because you're not, you really shouldn't, you really shouldn't put rules on it. Is it, you know, is it full exhaust? Is it full interior? Is it a cage? What, what basically transitions your street car to a race car? So, to me, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion, and this doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> right. Justin 91 LX. You just need some wings so you can just fly. So, to me, a street car is a car that you can drive daily, that's licensed and insured. It's a tough, man. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. That's tough to even talk about. Because, you know, I got a lot of friends that, that, that have, you know, no prep street, street cars that are race cars, but are street cars. They have full interiors. And, you know, obviously they probably got rid of the, the, the you know, the ACs and the, and, the, and the smog and all that stuff. But... To me, my black car is like almost too far. Does that make sense? That's why I keep like messing with the other stuff. Yeah, Jamie, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through the chat. So keep chiming in on what if gears were the first mod, that's that's the one that was chose last week the most. What would be the second mod that you did in your car? Because I'm going to keep track of all that stuff. You know, as we do our live streams. And we're going to start a new one. We're going to start a new one. Last week it was Gears was your first mod on your Mustang. This week, 
you can chime in on a second category. For all you junkyard dogs like me, what's the number one mod in a junkyard that you can get for your fox body? So keep chiming in there. Keep chiming in with your second mod that you would do. <laughs> Man, there ain't no blueprint, Jamie. Woo, that's a 95 breaks out of the box. <laughs> For a guy who's running 950s on Fox breaks still, I ain't going to say no more. It's the truth. I mean, I almost have, you know, I'd be sweating a little bit coming through them traps, bro. Yeah, so keep chiming in. What's your first junkyard mod if you had a full junkyard? What's the first thing you're pulling out of something and putting in your fox body? And then, of course, this is week two of the, uh, of the, of the mods. So what's the second mod that you put on your car? And they kind of go hand and foot. Gearhead, do you have a cam you like for a uh, 331 NA track build? I think Road Race and, and Auto X, they're kind of in, they're kind of specific. So I'm going to say that I don't have a recommendation for that, just because I don't want to steer you wrong. Bobby Forbal, with today's technology, you can get have a thousand on pump, full interior street car, not like back in the day. Yep, I agree with that. You got to pick one from the junkyard. Oh, okay. You got, I, I got you, Anthony. I got you. QMCs. Second mod would be underdrive pulleys. There you go. Adrenaline cycle told you. You see that, Bobby? 351 mod. <laughs> well, naturally, it's 351 winter. 351 winter out of a junkyard. Now, are you talking an F4? Or an FE block, or are you talking just old school? What's up, partly cloudy? It's good seeing y'all. So you got to pick one of them, Scotty. You can't be both. In, is it intake or heads? Which one goes first? What, me do a two-mile run? I run two miles every day. Ask Bobo. He'll tell you. Cousin, cousin Paul's in here. <laughs> so anyways, last week, Last week, kind of a crazy week, we was trying to get dad's car fixed in the first half of the week, which you guys know. But you guys, I got, I, got a, I got a problem right now. If you haven't noticed, if you haven't noticed, my 410 Windsor is done. The nice thing about the live stream is, is I let out little Easter eggs all over the place. So when I got future videos coming out, I'm going to bore you probably because I like talking about the stuff. But my 410 Windsor motor is done. Super expensive. But I got, I got one huge problem. Dave Dalkey, Mike the guy that tunes with me or tunes for me and with me, he put it all together for me. Right. And he painted it. Boys. My, my motor looks like a stripper. I'm going to have to actually blog it. My motor looks like a stripper. Cause when I came to the shop and I said, Dave, I had to bring him break-in oil because he stabbed the uh, distributor. Listen, listen. I wish I could do the picture thing for you here, but I'll show you guys very soon. I came to the shop and I said, Dave, here's the oil. 
He's going to stab the distributor, get everything right. We're going to, he's going to prime it. And he said, I said, where's my motor at? He's like, it's over here. I said, okay. So we go walking over there, right? And I looked at, I looked at this engine that looked exactly like my motor. And it was painted a thong color. I was like, what the, where's my motor, bro? And he's like, it's right there. And I'm like, that's not my motor. That's not my motor. Like, the only thing that's missing from being a thong color is the bedazzled little things on all the tabs from the 351. And he thought it was funny. So, I, I get it. I get about the strippers, guys. I get it. But literally, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Tony, tell me that doesn't look like a stripper. I looked at that thing and I was just like, what? I'm going to make a video of it and I'm going to let my YouTube guys decide whether it stays that color or not. Because it's a blacked out car. It needs to be a blacked out motor. But I'm going to let you guys, because Dave really wants me to keep it this color because he thinks it's funny. Now, they were supposed to paint it black, Josh. I don't know. <laughs> but when I first seen the motor, guys, literally, when I seen the motor, I'm like, that's not my motor. That, that's not my motor. And he's like, yes, it is. And I'm like, that's not my motor. We argued for 10 minutes. I was kind of disappointed. But it looks really good. It just looks like a stripper. It's got bling everywhere, you know? And it's got this like color. Yeah. So anyway. I should stop talking about that stuff because it's not really appropriate. In case there's anyway. <laughs> it's all in fun. Yeah, it's exactly it. Because the motor took all my money. Oh, you guys don't even know. He just laughed the whole time. Hey, man, Kevin, just laughed the whole time. So what else are we going to talk about? Because I just, I just took up 10 minutes talking about my engine color. Ugh. So anyways, last week I had some, I didn't have a whole lot of time this weekend to do it, but we, um, we were making plans to get the 410 over. I got to set the solid motor mounts in because I got to make sure that the engine sits just above the rack and the hood clears. Ever clean factory rust check off the floor of the fox body rust check i call 04 cobra the x1 <laughs> yeah i got the mounts they're the drop mounts from lmr and i actually welded the nut in the bolt or welded the bolt because i didn't like the fact that they were loose or they didn't look like they were welded strong enough so we, we're going to probably have to put spacers. I mean, I don't know if the Moroso pan's going to hit. The other one did. But I might have to put some spacers underneath the, the, uh, the motor mounts. So, Anyways, this week coming up, we got some we got some work to do to catch up on shop stuff. But... I got an issue in dad's old blue car. You guys seen the blog. Like I put my alternator bolt in this old Vortec kit in backwards. Where if you ever take the alternator off, if some of you guys know how the Vortec works, it's mounted down and below. Well, I had the bolt for the, the alternator. The head of it was towards the block and it, I couldn't get it out. So I had to take everything back apart. But we put another alternator on the car. 
and we put a brand new battery in it and my voltage my voltage is reading low still i don't understand it's got to be either the solenoid or the front headlight harness i, I, I it's got to be one of those two Roger, does anyone have the cam spec for 95 Mustang for intake exhaust opening and closing degree? I need to set my injector phasing in hot. It should be the same as Fox. I think that's still a ZZE cam, Roger. Junior Juvie, if I'm bypassing my smog pump and want to run an underdrive pulley, what size belt do I use? Okay, factory belt, I think 86 inches. Plus or minus, is that right? That's with full accessories. So I want to say it's 79, 78 in that area, Juvie. The best thing to do is take your car to the auto zone or whatever, advanced auto parts. Make sure you got a crowbar so you can pull the tensioner up and just try on a handful of belts. Make sure you route the water pump pulley right. Um, reverse rotation. Otherwise, you'll get... You know, it, it'll obviously be wrong. Josh, have you thought about doing a stock 300? <laughs> well, in my other live streams, I talked about Hobo 5.0. So I'm not going to say it anymore, but that's the name of the car right now. I just, uh, this is some other news that I wanted to tell you guys. I just actually met Saturday with my buddy DJ, who owns a frame shop. Now, here in Ohio, we have rust problems. But I have a coupe that I'm thinking about building. It's not Homo 5 -0. Come on now. Um. And I nicknamed it Hobo 5 -0 because it, I pulled the thing out of a hole. Literally. So somebody had taken the underneath of this car and completely stripped it and cleaned it and painted it, painted it. So my buddy DJ, who works at a body shop about an hour and a half from me, came up. And if you guys remember Brandon's car from the video where one saves the other, we're going to take that whole carriage and put it on this coupe and line it all up. It's going to be smoking awesome. But in a nutshell, there's a lot There's a lot of rust in the towers, but the car underneath is solid. Ask Bobo. He'll tell you he works here every day. Solid. For the most part, I got a set of clay. I got a set of Trick Flow 190s, 11Rs, ported heads and cover intake. What engine would, it, would you build? 347 or a 351, but obviously you can't do that with uh, the intake, so... Unless you got the bottom. <clears throat> but yeah, Hobo 50 may turn into something different. It may turn into a different name. So I haven't really, that's the first thing I thought of when I seen it. I'm like, man, that car looks like, oh, you know, that car's beat up, bro. I've been seeing better days. But I'm okay with that. But I'm going to try to save. I'm going to try to save it, you know, I think it's going to start. I think that'd be a great video series for my channel. And it's going to teach you guys a lot about some of the repair you can do on strut towers. I mean, honestly, after he explained, DJ spent an hour explaining it to me, man, it, it's not all that difficult to pull those front frame rails out. Are you going to have a video for when you race the dude with the Terminator? Yes. A lot. Which, which Terminator? What's up, Broken Tool? Man, I ain't seen Joe yet. I got my motors here. By chance, do you have an automatic transition for Fox Body at a good price? Man, I got a, two or three or four of them, but I have no idea if they're any good. It's hard to, I mean, it's hard. I literally, like, give AODs away. Because it's just, you know how hard it is to get it in there, and then you got to spend 12 quarts of fluid to see if it even works. I have some, yes. Anthony, when am I, ra when am I racing watts? Soon. 
I'm going to take his front plate, baby. See, up here in Ohio, me and Danny Watts, and hopefully this catches a little more fire with everybody else for fun, not money yet. We, we're going to race each other's front plates. Not that – see, two years ago, three years ago when we made that bet or we started making that rule, Ohio still had front plates that you had to get, which was dumb, but whatever. But they just released the video or they just released the rules or you don't have to have it anymore. So we race for front plates and then we race for money, trying to get it back. What, you let what go, Adrena? The AODs? I like AODs. Roger, when are you guys going to get Terminator X? Neo, I would love to watch videos on you tuning. Soon, because that's where we're at with the black car. I have a 331 stroker in rods. Can I reuse my factory pistons, and do I need to buy a bigger oil pan? Oil pan's always a good one. 331 stroker in rods. Can I reuse my factory pistons? So when you say you got a 331 stroker, you have the kit or you just have the crank? You're killing me with AODs, man. You are an advocate for AODs. I think, isn't that what uh, the Cobra clone was first? Was a, uh, on Brutal's channel? I remember that. Vaguely, but I remember. I'm surprised he doesn't jump on any of my live, live chats. Crank and rods only for now. So if you have a 331 crank and rods, you can use factory pistons. And I think it's considered a, 327? Is that what it's called? You need to check with your machine shop because I haven't seen somebody do that in a while. So anyways, what else we got to talk about? I wrote down some stuff. Remember, chime in. Last week, the popular vote was Gears. Gears was your first mod on your Fox body. This week, it's the second mod. What's your second mod on your Fox body if gears were the first one? And we added a category this week. You're walking through the junkyard. You got a Fox body. What's the first mod that you find in the junkyard or looking for for your Fox body? For those who's just joining us. Cheese, cheese, Volvo electric power steering pump for Coyote Swap. Is it worth it? I'm not there yet, cheese. I can't really comment on that. Shane, what do you think about meeting up with Tussin having a showdown for fun? Hell yeah. I asked Tussin where he raced that in one of his commented videos, but I didn't get any response. Blue Oval Media, hey, this channel's a thank you. Rich, why aren't you going with Terminator X versus a Mega Squirt? I'm actually going to, I don't know if I'm going to go with the Dominator or the Terminator. I don't know which one yet. <clears throat> Breaks from a new edge. Okay. Somebody said SN95 breaks. I think I think Justin91 LX did. Boss 3302. You ever have T5s get super hot? Oh, they get warm. But I mean, if they're getting super hot, then there's a lot of friction going on. Brutal got lightning on his mind. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, man. He's awesome. He's still with the Fox crowd. I mean, he did that brutal. He did that lightning stuff, and then he came back to his Fox. Oh, I'm sure he ain't getting rid of that stuff. Is it is it Florida, or is it like North Carolina? The five Tussin and Neo. Yeah, dude, I, I'm trying to take a vacation. So, like, I want to take Dad's car down there and race with him. And I don't want to take Black car down there because Black car is going to be ridiculous. But, I mean, I guess it would be cool because black car is my, kind of like my, my face of the channel. Even though the white car was before it and it's better than it. <laughs> Tussin 5.0 makes the most, yes, 
Absolutely. He's a uh, he's running 680s, 6 690s. That's a 10 second pass. 1080, 1090. What's up, Jamie? Yeah, you already been here. What am I talking about? My bad. Do you ever get checked out? Yes. Did you see his 455 video? After seeing your last video, I'm definitely upgrading 31. <laughs> now, Blue Oval, let me chime in on that. Tony can Tony and Bobo69 can actually tell you because Bobo's cousin Paul and Tony races with me. But my black car was almost identical to what Tony's car is about three or four years ago. And, and don't sleep on Fox axles so y'all don't get scared because the axles that I had in dad's old blue car were, were Ranger axles that were five lug. So they probably were weaker than a Fox body axle anyways. Who's to say? But for me to break them at 300, 320 horsepower may, would make anybody nervous. You know what I mean? So do with that information in that video with what you need to do. I wasn't impressed with that video too much. Not as much as that 5.0 video, but it's good. It's good content. I watched it. Steven Shepard, hey, you ever heard anything good about the speedometer or Speedmaster 351 qualifier? I have not, Stephen. Somebody might chime in, though, that might. Yeah, the 28 splines aren't bad. It's just that car was just ready to break an axle. All right, that's, the, that's, that's our first axle, isn't it, Cousin Paul? Because Cousin Paul broke a pinion. Then we broke a diff. We broke about every part in these cars. I've been running 28 spine stock axles for 10 years and have been, yep. So, I mean, like I said, don't sleep on the Fox body axles. They could just be better. I don't know if I'd go 700 though on 28 spine. Although I'm at seven, I was at 725 or whatever with 31s. And just C clips, much like what I just did. Boss three, my blue 302, my 302 is smoking real bad and misfiring. Fuel out the exhaust. Any tips? If you're getting fuel out the exhaust, that means your injectors are washing the cylinders out. They're dumping fuel. Um, if you don't have a chip, if you're gonna have to get it tuned. It's just it's just washing it out. You see what I mean? And that's not good for the rings or the oil. Yeah, that's what I thought too, Sean. My turbo hit pretty good, but not like a supercharger. And this thing's just a baby one from like 30 years ago. You should build another car and do a raffle to win like you were going to do with Hot Wheels. I would do that, Jim, but... On YouTube, that's frowned upon. The only reason why I did not go through with the raffle with Hot Wheels was because in their rules and regulations, it's against their EULA. The only way you can raffle is if you charity the money. So it was kind of like, you know, I didn't want to get in any trouble with the channel. So it is what it is. I would definitely um, raffle it off. I, I mean, I... I think other people are supposed to be doing that, but from what I read, it was just kind of something I didn't want to mess my channel up, you know? <laughs> it happened overnight. Everything was fine. Something's got to be dumping fuel. What's the most boost you'd run on an on three setup on a 10 to one stock box, Holly HP and a good fuel, all of it. And everybody else is going to chime in the same answer, Aaron. And I'm not even being smart. I would not, on a 10 to 1 stock block, all of it. I mean, I would go up 
Stock box good for 14 or 15 pounds, um, unless you got big heads, big intake. Yeah, that's the first Bobo. That cousin Paul. You need to change your name to cousin Paul Bobo. Yes, that's the first axle we broke. Black cars pinion. Yep. Yeah, Gregory, we just made a video of it. Uh, we we finished Dad's axle. Got it all set up. See, I like to make videos. See, if you notice that video was 15 minutes. I was going to split the video, but I didn't feel it was fair for my viewers not to get, you know, I had already the week before made you watch 10 minutes for me to go 10 feet. So I was just like, you know what? We're going to fix the car. We're going to vlog it as much as we can. And then we're going to go make some hits and go fast. So I'm sure some of y'all appreciated that because you get to see me fix it and race it in the same video. But I would go probably 15 pounds, Aaron. It depends on what you – that would be the absolute max. End of story. 14. Now consider when you go up that high, Aaron, make sure you got a 10 or 11-pound spring in the gate. Don't put a little small spring in there and expect your controller to give you 10 pounds. That's a, that's a, tech, that's a tech tip for you guys with turbos. Did you ever um, – Blue 302, tried a different computer and tried different injectors, same result. Do you ever have any 79 through 86 coupe quarter glasses? Those are tough to find. I don't raise it as we speak. Socar 215, bottom 93 hatch with a Crawford 347. Can I boost it at all? That's a tough one, bro. I would say you could, but I wouldn't go high. Roger, I was I was at six pounds for a while. I was afraid to go up to 10 until one of your live streams. You said that you don't wake up until – it don't. So I tried 10, and boy, huge difference. I appreciate you sharing that, Roger. That's exactly what happens. 302s just wake up right around 9, 10 pounds. And, and you can stay – that's a really happy, happy boost level for those motors too. Rich, would, would upgrading rear shocks to something better in coilovers help spinning 40 miles an hour in a turbo hatch? Absolutely. At least single adjustable strange. They're not super they're not super expensive and you can adjust them. Partly cloudy 420. Do you run quarter mile or just eighth? I run them both. In the coupe, we're about Hobo 50 is going to be built for both of them. Because uh, old Chris Watson and I are going to do some collaborating next year. Yeah, he, I'm, I'm friends with Chris Watson. So, again, I want you guys, if you haven't, if you guys have YouTube accounts, obviously you do, I want you to go over to Project Stock Bottom End is on YouTube. Now, he hasn't made a lot of content yet because he's just kind of getting into it. But he's got one heck of a Facebook business channel too. So make sure you go over to Facebook on his business. He's under Project Stock Bottom End on Facebook, Project Stock Bottom Men on YouTube. So Chris is a good friend of mine. So, Blue 302, I know it's a head scratcher. Yeah. Bobo won't let me change. <laughs> What's up, bros? What's up, Eric? What's that? How you say that? Art, Art Turon? I don't like messing people's names up. I'm just going to call you Art. Thanks for, thanks for chiming in, brother. I appreciate that, Steve. What's up, Neo Smitty? Can you talk more about coupes being aerodynamic? I missed it. Oh, okay. So I got a good friend of mine, and he was in the he's in the last video at 12 minutes. Mustang Mike Meredith. He's a good friend of mine. He's actually gone mad 363 here on YouTube. Anyways, he had watched a recent video within the last six months or a year where they said that Fox Body Coupes are literally still some of the most aerodynamic cars to drag race. That's why you always see them at racetracks. That's not the only reason, but you know. Anyone talk about the Terminator X? I purchased it right now. I'm wondering if there's anything I should get before pulling the trigger. I wish I could help you more there, Chase.
Well, Mustangs in general, Adrian, I think that's probably more of what he meant more than just coops. You know what I'm saying? So maybe the coop and the hatch. Well, the LX. Roger, I just purchased Maximum Motorsports coilover kit from 95, and I regret it. I should have, I should have went strange. I like strange. I got it on the front and the rear of my black car. And they don't pay me to say that. T-Web, go through a Holly rep to see free tune or lower. Yep. Mod motor. So is it better just to run a spring than having a boost controller? Now listen, check it out, mod. From all my experiences, and this goes with the black Mustang or the white Mustang that was making thousand or eight hundred, whatever. We had an absolute nightmare of a time when we had just one single spring in there that was like six or eight pounds, and then we would click. You know, we had a manual boost controller, so we would we boost it up. And it would spike and it would drop and it wouldn't hold boost. So we would say, okay, we need to figure out what boost we want to run at absolute bottom. So I said, you know, 10 or 11 pounds max. I mean, with no controller. So we put a double spring in there and ran about 10 or 10 and a half pounds of boost with no controller. And then it seemed to like it and seemed to able to control and stabilize the boost up to 14 or 15 or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So the, the heavier the spring helped regulate boost control versus running a real light spring and making your controller run at all. Does that make sense? Whew. That was a lot. <clears throat> Hats off, you making five O engines fast. I appreciate that, Clay. Yeah, see, Anthony just had that problem. We just fixed that problem for him. Or he fixed this problem. Because I said that same thing to him at the track. Run 10 or 11 pound spring with no controller and then add boost as we go. You see what I mean? If you run a weak spring, then it's just a nightmare when you're trying to get into 12, 13, 14 pounds of boost, which I did with Hot Wheels. I, I, I said a lot and I probably confused you there, but just run a heavier spring. Figure out what boost you want to run, run that spring and then click it in. Neo, did you see Celine tried running an operation in China and they stole his? No, geez, OP. Buck 66. So I have, which car are you talking about? The black car, dad's old blue car, or the Hobo 50 coming up? Yeah, it went up quite a bit. Okay, so the black car, last year we were making 700, and we were running like 940s, a stick shift car, full weight, but we had to rebuild the motor this year, so we're hoping to go the same, if not a little bit better, because, you know, once you get faster, it's little baby steps to go even faster. Um my white car's been 920s, and Dad's old car. We're trying to get into the 11s and trying to kind of make a make another hot, you know, project Hot Wheels build. And then we got a coupe we're going to be building to uh, to do a bunch of stock bottom end stuff with. So I don't know if that answers your question, but you know what I'm saying. The black car has a 410 Windsor in it now, stroke 351. The white car had a 363 stroker, which we just re re uh, resembled that. Um, the black car also had stock by the man 302 GT40 stuff. And Hobo 50 is just going to be a bone stock, stock bottom end motor with big heads intake and turbo. And we're going to run some stick shift events with Chris. What is your best intake head combo in a small push rod in your opinion? GT40. It's cheap, it's easy, makes good power. Considering that you could spend $1,500 on a set of aluminum heads.
But yeah, I mean, your aftermarket. If you're asking about aftermarket stuff, definitely trick flow. I like AFR heads though, but I like trick flow intakes. Is it me or five oh blocks going up in price? You can't find one under five around town for five hundred. We'll see you, Smitty. Thanks for chiming in, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the cars. They're going up in price. They're still a popular motor. You're the only one I know that keeps a manual, runs nine seconds. Must guys have to go auto to go. I just, I got I got to have my stick shift, man. That's the whole point is trying to make a car run consistently at nines with a stick shift. I, I'm just a stick shift guy, man. I appreciate that, Mod. Jim Mitchell, what's up, Dan? If you delete the smog AC, what size belt should you run? Um, now, do you have the Ford Racing Bracket that pulls it up? AFR Enforcer Heads, any experience with – not yet. Not yet, Matt. Roger, eating a BLT and watching the chat. Appreciate it. So can you guys see the chat on everybody else, right? Hey, Neil, thanks for the plug numbers. Got the new plugs in and everything. Good. That's cool. 3923s or the uh, TR6s? I'm a closet AOD guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so we got about five, ten minutes left. Anybody else want to hit me with some stuff? Got some tech stuff? Questions for those guys who just chimed in last week, we did a poll kind of like an open poll. What was your first Fox body mod this week? It's what was your second Fox body mod. And then we added a new category. Your Fox body. You just got a Fox body. You're walking through the junkyard. What's the first thing you pull from a junkyard for your Fox body? A good ignition upgrade is definitely the distributor and an a, uh, a 6AL box or some sort of, uh, you know, ignition box. What um, Do you run an 8.8? What do you do? Nine-inch ends? The one axle I have the nine-inch ends in, but I just do C-clip eliminators. Bucks, 66. So, anyways, I'm going to spend the last couple minutes talking about what's coming up. So, like I said, best plug for a GT40 non-P head, uh, Autolite 103s or the TR6 NGKs. Aaron? If cars breaking up at the top end, would you look at first, timing or fuel? Timing. And check fuel pressure regulator or fuel pressure. So I'm building a nitrous 93 hatch. We're doing a two-step. I've heard guys, no. Because the nitrous is going to want to party as soon as you hit the pedal. On three turbo, 70 millimeter with lightning, 5.8 top end, stock bottom end, play any issues? 5.8 top end, stock bottom. Nope. Send it. My first ma, um, trick flow stage cast junkyard, I could say AC can put, okay. Installed a set of AFR 165s with 1.7 rockers. Now only when it reaches operating temp, I get ticking noise. A lifter? Probably run a little bit of thicker motor, uh, motor oil. I had a lifter tick. Let me think about that. Installed a set of AFR 165s with 1.7 rockers. Now only when it reaches operating temperatures. It's got to be... Check your rockers. It's got to be possibly a lifter just sticking. See you, Jamie. So anyways, got what's coming up now. What's coming up soon is I'm going to have 410 Windsor, you know, vlogging the 410 Windsor going into black car. Um, I'm also going to be putting um, – we're going to be doing a sneaky little trick at the track with dad's car. And this Wednesday, I think there's going to be a video there. I got a video with Tony Conley's coming up. I'm going to do, I'm going to do him justice. 
And I mean, I just got a lot of videos to put out with the black car with just, I don't want to waste anybody's time putting it back together, but you know, that's part of it. So you guys are going to want to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to vlog it. I will hit you up on T5 upgrade. Catch you in your next live chat. I appreciate you, Clay. All my lifters tick after 2,500. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, guys, I'm going to call it right there. I appreciate everybody coming out. What's up, Neo? Is there a way to tell what size drum brakes without pulling the measuring the drums on the 89? The brake drums in the back, I think, are nine inch. Anyways, I do appreciate everybody. Um, if you get a chance, make sure you check out all the channels. Uh, Justin91LX, Brutal, 50 Tussin, uh, Stock Project Stock Bottom End. I appreciate everybody's time that they do into this live chat because we'll continue doing it what we do. And I appreciate everybody there. So make sure you keep the wheels straight. I appreciate appreciate you guys. Have a good weekend. Have a good week. Get those mods done. <laughs>